towards these things. And, you know, we, we all have these huge goals and these huge ideas about life, and we all strive for them every single day. And that's mm -hmm. what leads us to places like this. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that's why I love these dudes, because they're always pushing me further. And I'm always pushing them, and they're supportive of that. And so. none of us accepts mediocrity. Yeah. We right. don't accept what, what is given. We always want a little bit more. We always want to push to see how far we can. Like, like, like Sal and I mentioned yesterday, we never like to take no for an answer, but we're ready to take no for an answer. Exactly. Yes, That's the difference. Exactly. We're ready to ask the question, right. always. Right. Hey, would you mind? Could we do this? Could we do this? They could say no. We're cool with no. What's, what's the hurt in asking? They exactly. wonder if they could buy Nine out of ten times, they probably won't. Nine out of times, they might actually say yes. So ask those questions. Push yourself. That's something Diego's just touching on right now. Yeah. I think... What advice do you have for people who want to be a photographer? I like to have. Go out and shoot. Every fuck every day. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can say every fucking day. So we're gonna apologize for the profanity ahead of time. Yeah, as you guys me. know, as a rule of thumb, Alberto likes to keep profanity off his Instagram lives, but we're on the Grub Father's Instagram lives. Exactly. And so I apologize me, for any profanity for anyone that yeah, I, 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 I watch my profanity because I gotta be honest guys, on my Instagram it's not profanity free. Yeah, exactly. But for just, right now it can be, if you guys want to be but But I would say for photographers out there, aspiring photographers, go out and shoot every single day. Go out and challenge yourself to take 10 photos, 20 photos, and um, practice, practice, practice. That's the only way you're going to get used to, one, your camera, two, the settings, three, figuring out, you know, how, what exposures work, what I know. Like, I know if I look at this room, I'm going to be ISO, you know, 300, f-stop, you know, four to eight, depending on what I'm going for, you know, like... I'm already clicking the numbers in my head. So, yeah, it's very important just to go out and shoot and just get used to that and start knowing about exposure. And just go YouTube tutorials. YouTube is the library of the world. You can go there and you can find anything quickly, efficiently, and you can start practicing. So go out and practice. Yo, YouTube, and shoot every day. Day. YouTube is a library of the world. Yeah, it is. Wait, it really someone's, is. Everyone tweet YouTube that we said that first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah go tell YouTube. Quote me on that. YouTube is the library of the world right now, so... yeah. You What's the most anything. embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? <sighs> I have no <laughs> idea. I only ask that because he asked like five times. I feel like I gotta ask the okay. question. Um, I don't... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really get that embarrassed about things. I usually kind of mm -hmm. blow them off. You gotta laugh them off. Can't take yourself too seriously. So like, I'm sorry. I know that's a disappointing answer, but I honestly, nothing comes to my head, really. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, when are we eating gyros? Tonight. No, right now. We're going to go right now. I might take a dip in the pool, and then we're going. We're definitely going. So, so be ready. Check the Insta story. It's going to be up. We're going to the best gyro place in Patmos. So. They want us to make a YouTube channel and post vlogs there from your guys' travel. What you guys think if we made like a different website that was our own, that you guys could see exclusively our content, you can go specifically to that one website just to see all the shit we do, stuff we do. It's the Godfather's life. That's an idea. What is that? That's an no, idea. I was saying around the Godfather's life. I know, but I still like to keep profanity. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I'd say we're on the path to doing that. And we're on the path to, trust me, getting something to you guys. That the owner of the hotel you're staying at is my mother's cousin. What? <laughs> what? What? Who is this person? Wait, hold on, hold on. Who is that? Let me talk we to that person really quickly. I want to talk to this person. This place is amazing. That's you said the owner of this hotel is your mother's cousin. That's such a small world. Wow. Uh, Maria, or Maria Pop 1D. Poppied. Maria Poppied. Maria Poppied. Well... That is amazing. Tell your mother's cousin that we absolutely <laughs> love it here. Your mother's cousin. And we hope to come back again and 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 again. So tell your mother's cousin that this place is amazing. Now we'll go back to uh I think I think we should put Sal in the hot seat. What do you guys think? Let's put Sal in the hot seat. We should put Sal in the hot seat. I'll 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 monitor this interview. Diego will take the pictures behind the scenes. We'll do the whole switcheroo. So any questions you have for the Grub Father? Remember, the Grub Father is a traveler extraordinaire, foodie extraordinaire. But let's let's break away from the Grub Father and let's talk about Salvatore Di Benedetto, the man, the artist, the writer. What up? Uh, what we got? So, what questions do we have for Sal? Sal, how do we become friends? How did we become friends? How did we become friends? Uh, it all started on a lonely Brooklyn night where Diego said, "Yo." You should come out with me and my brother. He's, you know, he's like, just wanna, he wants to go out tonight. So yeah, I'll go out with, I'll go out with your, uh, 
with your brother tonight. We'll, we'll all hang out, have a good time. Next thing I know, we're watching the sunrise in New York City on a rooftop, and it was the. Uh, would you say that? it was one of the best nights of my life? I would say. I, I, oh my I would, gosh! Yeah. I, would, I would have to say it was absolutely one of the best nights of my life. It was a. Uh, it was a night where I was in a place where I was very sad, and I got to meet. I, I, it was like the first time I met my brothers. It was cool. Diego was there, so that was like something that grounded me. And then I met this kid named Sal, who literally uh, we connected in a way immediately. We became brothers immediately. No, I, and I brought you food that day. You brought me food. Brought you food. you brought, brought me food that day. I was yeah. in a bad mood. You brought me food. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, Sal, people want you to describe your travel experience in one word. I'm not a fan of the one word sentences, but give us one word and then give us... The same thing describing your travel experience. But first give us in one word and then why. One word to describe my travel experience. Travel experience. One word and why. <laughs> Maybe like how did you achieve the ability to have such experience in your travel? First give us one word about your travel experience and then explain how you achieved that experience. I'm going to quote future on this one. Oh, wow. <laughs> Getting deep with the philosophy. <laughs> Sensational. Sensational. Your travel experience is sensational. sensational. Now, how did you begin to achieve this travel experience? Because I know many people watching are probably they're probably younger, and if not, they're, they're curious. They're like, Sal, how did you do it? You're 26 years old. You're traveling the world. You're eating the best, best food in the world. You're hanging out with the best dudes in the world. How, how do you do it? You know, I think that it's all about putting yourself out there. And um, like we were talking about earlier, not taking no for an answer. Just being able to say, hey, I... Uh, I know what I want, and I know what my life is supposed to be like. So I'm not going to sit back and watch other people do it and live in envy. I'm going to take the steps I need to take to go for it. And I think the biggest thing, uh, and it doesn't matter what your dream is, if it's traveling the world, if it's becoming a biologist, if it's becoming a teacher, the first thing you have to do is put one foot in front of the other every day. Small steps, small steps. Exactly. Small steps. Everything just moves together. Exactly. I love that. I can't tell you how many times I've been discouraged, I've been um, told no, I've been denied, and it's all by people that, you know, they're not, they're not, um, they're not confident enough in themselves, so they're going to put you down. And people who are confident in themselves lift you up. So that's one thing I've always learned, and that's one thing I've always strived to do, is that if, if someone's a good person and someone treats other people well, I will do anything I can to help them achieve their goals. That's how you have to work. I love that. Okay, we have a couple of questions coming in that I actually think are really cool. Right. So one of them is, the Grubfather has eaten now all over the world. The Grubfather's tried things from every walk of life. Every, he's tried a lot. Have there ever been a meal that was actually hard for you to stomach because of the flavor profile or something that you just didn't personally agree with? Who the hell asked that? I love you. <laughs> That's a good question. Well, I mean, I, I may have uh, tweaked it a little bit. I may have tweaked it a bit to kind of fit well, more of an interview lifestyle, right? <laughs> an interview structure. But the question that it's based was like, was there ever a food that was like very difficult for you to stomach? Yes. Why? Um, and what was it, if you don't mind telling it us? It was in Thailand. Okay. And it was a fried scorpion. I was sitting um, in Bangkok on the side of the streets and these uh, street vendors came up to us and they did this to all the tourists because, you know, obviously everyone wants to do something crazy when they're in Thailand and that's why I got this tattoo, <laughs> which, you know, that's right there, that's right there. well, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you got a tattoo in Thailand? Yeah. With a, with a Wait, so what is that? So, so that to me speaks about someone that grabs experience and decides to take it. So yeah. speaking with food, you said you had this meal. Uh, give us more about just you grabbing experience, talking about this food. I don't know. I, I like that. I, 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 I want to hear more about that, Sal. I, I love that. Well, it's all, about, about that. it's all about culture, man. That's what it comes down to. I studied uh, cultural anthropology in school, history, international studies. And at the end of the day, when you travel, it all comes down to what is the land and what is the people that you are visiting. Because I could go anywhere in the world. I could stay at a resort. I can stay at a place that has, you know, uh, a pool. Or I could stay at a place like this or at the other place that we're staying. And, and this is where you get the experience. You really feel what it's like to be somewhere. And to me, that is the most beautiful thing in the world. And I try to immerse myself in culture any chance that I get. And that could be down south in, in the United States. That could be across the world in Greece. That could be in Thailand getting a damn tattoo. So, awesome question here. This was a great question. Um, I just want to comment on that. Uh... The, the dream catcher girl. Thank you so much for your question. So you see, you're experiencing culture, you're experiencing all these people. Are there people that you've met in your travels that, that you've connected to that, you still, that you're still in touch with? Oh my God. I have so many friends from traveling. Um, you know, when I think about it, Diego and I became friends yeah. through traveling. I was gonna um, say, like Diego was, yeah. you were working at that Brooklyn store. So mm -hmm. Diego was working at a store in Brooklyn. And um, he wasn't living in New York, so this this was a traveling experience. Yeah, exactly. Like you were living there, but not really. I was there for a month. I was you there. were there for a, a month. month like and here, half. like here, like here, exactly. Right? A month and a half. And um, 
You know, just like I, I went in because I was going to Hawaii, which was my first big trip ever when I started traveling the world. Hawaii was my first stop. Shout out to George Roy. And I, I was going in for a, a bathing suit because the store looked cool. It's like I had good bathing suits. Diego and I ran into each other, got into a conversation, started talking a little bit about art. And then he was like, oh, I'm filming a documentary about artists. You should be in it. Because I, at the time, I did spoken word. And long story short, we connected and then we became best friends and then we became best friends and then we became brothers and now this is where we're at in Patmos, Greece. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up in two questions for your hot seat, Sal. Right. One thing, is there a place you cannot wait to visit? Somewhere that is on your bucket list, that's always been on your bucket list, that is coming up for the grub father or you know needs to be done within the next five years? This was a big one, this right here. Greece? Greece was a huge one. I mean, that was intense. I will say that... Somewhere else I've always wanted to go is Japan. Japan. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, Cree Delio. I love your question. I'm going to use that one to end the end Sal's hot seat. Okay. But yeah, so Japan. Japan. Why I love, Japan? I love Japanese culture. I love sushi. Um, I, I love the Japanese way of life. It's fast paced yet you know you can find the Zen when you need to. So um, I, I can't wait to go to Japan. I think it's going to be sick. Dope. I mean, I, I, I uh, if you guys don't know. Uh, Personally, I, I've always wanted to travel to Japan. Uh, in college, I studied a movement, pe uh, movement method that actually, I studied for two years in that movement method that was based in Japan, the Suzuki method, and I, I really would love, one of my dreams would be to go there and study for two years, so I, I totally get like that grasp of Japanese culture and whatnot. So, are you gonna come with me? Yeah, I, dude. We're all going together. What should we all go to Japan? That? Should us three go to Japan? I think we should, right? Best, man. All right, and this is the question that I thought was awesome. I, I forgot who asked it. Uh, I forgot your handle. I, I remember who asked it, but I, I forgot your handle. But the question is, Sal, in all of your travels, you're someone that me. I can see you grab experience by the balls. Yeah. You 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 jump at the chance. You never say no. Mm -hmm. you're, you're you're a yes and type of person. That's why we get along. Yeah. What's the craziest thing you've done whilst traveling? Because that was such a good question. Like, wait, I know Sal. Oh, I know. I know Sal can get a little wild sometimes. So what 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 is Sal's? Greatest, like what, what? What is the craziest thing that you would think you've done? Whether it be you put yourself in a situation that someone who thinks about safety a lot shouldn't, like, didn't do, and you're like, you know what? This one chance I did, and I took it. Yeah. Or, uh, or, or a crazy thing. I got this random tattoo on my butt. Or what? What is the craziest thing you think you would consider the craziest thing you've done whilst traveling? Uh, all right. Well, again, it's gonna all go back to my Thailand trip because um, I booked those tickets by myself. I hopped on a plane by myself. I went to Thailand by myself. Um, I got off, I had no idea what I was gonna do, but I made friends everywhere I went. And throughout that trip, I just rode on the back of random motorcycles, which I know is totally unsafe, and I don't, don't suggest anybody does that, but it was a thrill on time in my life. I got this tattoo of Sakyant with a needle this big by a guy named Arjun O. Wait, a needle that big? This big. Oh, like like a whalebone tattoo almost. Yes, like, pretty much, they hammer they it. They hammer it in? Yeah, they hammer oh, it. Oh, there's a video of Rihanna doing that. Okay. Getting a whalebone tattoo. So okay. you and Rihanna both have like these oh, yeah. awesome tattoos. I actually cool, think cool, that cool. Angelina Jolie has the same exact tattoo, which I did not know at the time. Because I wouldn't have gotten <laughs> it if that was the case. Okay. Alright, and know. you know what? So, um, for everyone... For everyone on the live right now, um, one of the reasons why I hang out with people is because they inspire me as an artist, as a person, as a man, as whatever you want to call it. I get inspired. Sal's whole motto of life inspires me to be better every day. Just like I said, Jordan Morello asks that question when he goes to sleep, did I become better today? And I know if I hang out with Sal, I do. So the question I have for you, Sal, is what advice would you say turned your life into now? You've tra how many countries you've traveled to? You've traveled to so many countries across the world. You've eaten in so many restaurants. You've, yeah. you've, you've eaten in Michelin star rated restaurants. You've eaten in little huts that float in the middle of the ocean in Jamaica. You, you, <laughs> you've done some shit, man. You've yeah, done right, some really, right. Sal has done some really cool shit. And I want to know, for everyone here that's asking us, like, how do you guys do this? Why do you do this? What was the decision you made that changed your, your thinking to say, I can freaking do this. I'm not going to be someone that just accepts life. I'm going to be someone that creates my life. Yeah. What, what was that? What, what, what's, the, what's the advice you give to people for that? It was actually uh, after I went through a really shitty breakup. And I was sitting in the downstairs of my basement apartment. And I was with my friend Elon. Uh, he's not watching this because I didn't have Instagram. But if he did, and he knows this, that he made this deciding factor in my life. Yeah, we were sitting down there and he goes, you know what, Sal? He was like, I sometimes think of old man me. And I'm like, Elon, what the hell are you smoking, bro? Old man me, what is that? He's like, old man me is me when I'm 80 or 90 years old. I'm an old man. I'm looking back on my life and, and I wonder, did I do it right? Did I do it right? Because at the end of that life, you don't know what's awaiting you after that. You only have that one life to live. And at this rate, I'm 24 years old and, and I got my 24. whole life. Well, at the time when we were talking. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Um, and 
and I, I looked at it and, and it just clicked. That moment clicked in my head where I said, I am 24 years old, I have the world by the balls. For those of you who are tuning in that are 16, 17, 18, all the, the bullshit that you're going through right now will never matter. It all matters when you get older and you put investment into yourself. So at the end of the day, I said, you know what? When I look back at my life when I'm older, I would have rather taken the risk. I would have rather booked the plane tickets to go somewhere. And, and you know, maybe I didn't have all the money in the world when I got there, but I figured it out. And then eventually I started to learn photography. Diego taught me stuff. Yo, we, we, we started all growing together. And now, together. here we are together. in Greece, living the life. So, okay, once again. Sorry. I think one of the most important things that we kind of hatched on is we met people on the same mission as us. We met people that weren't going to accept life as it was given. We weren't people that were going to be like okay with just being satisfied. We wanted more. We wanted. We wanted. We want more. We want. We want to explore more. We want to discover more. We want to learn more. Crave life. Not crave, crave life. life. Crave life. Crave life. I love that. And that, that's the thing. When you meet people yes, that are on the same mission as you, it gets so much easier to to be inspired. Um, Find people that inspire you. Surround yourself with people that make you want to be better. That, that's one of the things I would say. And I think that's what we're touching on. I mean, I, I, I am lucky enough to have been born in the same family as this kid over here that makes me want to be better every day. I'm lucky enough that this kid met this kid and meeting them made me want to be better every day. So I, I think the people you surround yourself are just as important as the mission you're on. Dude, that is the most important thing that yes. is out there. And if I can, if one piece of yeah, advice I can give to anybody is this. Watch who you surround yourself with because negative energy breeds negative energy. It's poisonous. It's poisonous. It's poisonous. It's poisonous. It is poison. So find people that are happy with their lives and that are happy for you when you do good things because the worst thing that can happen to you is that you fall into a group of people that don't, don't want to see you succeed. See you succeed. I think that was like spot on. Spot on, man. Spot on. How, how did the grub father do in his, in his hot seat? What'd you guys Damn, think? Damn, guys. Let Woo. me know. He, he's, he's a little sweaty. He feels... I feel a little bit more comfy because I have Diego's hat on and I don't have my fucking crazy ass hat. <laughs> 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 all right, so it's my turn. Who wants to be the interviewer? Who wants to be taking right, the pictures? Do you want to switch? Yeah, yeah, we all okay. switch through. So I go. All right, all right. I wish I still had wine. I'm not going to lie. All right. All right Ask your questions. All let's right. See, let's see how they do. There we go. All right. So. Let's see. <laughs> Waiting for some questions, guys. You can use my camera if you want. Okay. All right, so let's start this up, guys. Questions for Alberto Rosende. Ask me anything. For the Alberto Rosende. Okay, well, you can get a little weird. I'm okay with that. Favorite childhood memories. That's a good one. All right, there's this one memory. You better include me. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah. One memory we have together. Um, there's this one memory Diego and I had. Uh, we were in the car. We were little kids. I don't know if Diego remembers this. I probably remember. And I asked him, I was like, Diego, do you ever feel like you were Dude, of course I remember that. To do something <laughs> cool? And he goes, what? And then I know I had to be 12. Diego was like 10 years old. I had no idea what I was talking about. I was, 10, I was 12. But I asked him, I was like, Diego, do you ever, did you ever have that feeling like you were meant for something great? Not just like whatever. You actually were meant to do something great. And he goes, yeah, I totally feel that. And we both talked. At, the, at these young ages, we talked for like what? I don't remember how long we talked about it, but we talked about how we, we knew that from a very young age, we were gonna be people that decided and created our reality. We weren't people that were gonna accept what was given. We were people that were gonna make what we want. Okay, so most people say it's hard to be under the age of 25 and travel the world. Well, Diego and I didn't accept that rule. We decided to figure out how to do it, and we did. And we're doing it right now, and we're currently still learning. That's one of the biggest things about us. But we decided that from the age of 12. Which I thought was cool because that was, it's one of my most present memories. Okay, awesome. Oh, my mom's <laughs> oh hey. <laughs> um, so, do you have any secret passions? Is <laughs> that <laughs> 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 so secret passions or addictions? Secret passions or addictions? Uh, I do watch a lot of TV. <laughs> okay, a lot of TV. I, I watch a lot of TV. Everyone knows that I watch a lot of TV. Um, Oh, here we go. Who inspired you or taught you the most while growing up? Other than your brother, it says. Other than my brother. That's actually very good. Um, one of the things that I recently read in an article on a blog that I follow called The Art of Manliness, which I think is such a well-rounded blog. It teaches how to be a well-rounded man, which is something I want to be. He spoke about Marcus Aurelius's meditations. And in it, Marcus Aurelius's meditations, the first few pages or first few chapters are him talking about he gained inspiration or he gained life lessons from the people around him. So I think that's something that I, I was very lucky to have around me constantly. I had my mother, who is the epitome of what it means to be a strong, 
beautiful, understanding, kind, compassionate, intelligent person. Not just woman or man, person. And on top of that, she's a badass woman, my mom. Then I have my dad, who's an intellectual, who's a compassionate person, who's a born leader, who's uh, someone who, who, who values education, who values the integrity in a person. Um, so I have that wonderful example as well. And then because of them, I, I, I learn to learn lessons from every person I meet in walk of life. That's one thing. Every person you meet is the opportunity to learn from, regardless of whether or not you think they can teach you something. Um, <laughs> so I would have to say, uh, I've just been surrounded by people and I've been lucky enough to have the perception to say, I'm going to learn from this person rather than judge them or rather than feel judged by them. I'm going to learn from them. Mm. And I think that's what, it was more of a mindset thing, but I was also just lucky enough to be around people that were extremely inspirational. Janet Ehrlich, who runs the, uh, she's the creative director and one of my most inspirational people. She does uh, the Fort Lauderdale Children's Theater, which is where I started doing theater and really found like this passion of mine. She's also an inspirational person, kind, compassionate, intelligent, works hard, truly cares about all of her students, each individual, uh, that, that kind of love that you see with, through her, through my parents, through some of the teachers I've had, uh, Mr. Seeger, Mr. Dr. Mulder, people that have inspired me. You, right. You see <laughs> okay, Sorry. so how has <laughs> acting affected your attitude towards life? Oh, that's a good one. I like that That's one. a really good question. One thing you learn when you become an actor is you can never judge your characters. Or you can, but you have to understand them first. And it's, it's helped with understanding people. Sometimes there are people that, that bother you or they, they, they kind of push you the wrong way. And as a person that is unaware of that, it, it's okay to be like, ugh, I don't, I don't like that person. But as an actor, it's, it's, you have to dive in and be like, why is that person like that? What would cause me to be that way? What would I have to go through to treat someone this way or to be in this situation and behave this way? Or what, what's holding me down? Um, in that sense, acting has kind of made me more of a grounded person and more of a person that's uh, more open to uh, other people and to how they behave. Okay. I have, I have a question for you, actually. Yeah. Um, when you were, you know, in high school and you were acting in, in elementary school and middle school, do you think that um, any? Did, well, not do you think? Did anyone ever tell you like that's weird, Alberto? You know, you're weird for acting because I remember um, watching um, <laughs> Ashton Kutcher give his acceptance speech and talking about how you know this one's for the weirdos, this one's for the people, whatever. But do you think that if you know you had let those people get into your head, obviously you wouldn't be here right now with all these people you that know, are in seventh grade. I did a musical, and Joseph and the Technical Dream Code. Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dream Code. <laughs> and they, the, the musical they, it did really well, so they had us perform it for the whole school. After that musical performed the whole school, I got made fun of incessantly for the rainbow coat, for the long hair, for everything that I had to do. I had to perform, and I was dancing and singing, and that wasn't cool. But thankfully, I had this wonderful woman named Miss Ryan, a teacher, who forced me, and my mother, forced me to be in the play the next year, even though I didn't want to because I got made fun of so much. Mm -hmm. I almost stopped acting. My brother remembers this. Yeah. I literally almost stopped acting because of how much I was made fun of, how much I was made insecure by a passion that I had, how much that people told me that what I loved wasn't good enough. Um, thankfully, I had the right people in my, in my world to continue me on the path of being like, no, this isn't your passion, this isn't your good at. But yeah, man, I got made fun of a lot. And in high school, too, I got made fun of a lot. I mean, it was that, was that joking, like, tongue-in-cheek joking where right. they weren't, but they were. Right, right, right. It's still hurtful. It still hurts you when people that you care about make fun of you for something that you're obviously passionate about, something you devote yourself to. But that's something you can't worry about. If they make fun of you for that, then they're not your friends. Right. If, they, if they put you down for something that brings you up, they're not, they're not people you should really have around. And that's one of the hardest things that I think growing up teaches you. It's like, it's okay to let people fall behind. It's okay to let go of people that don't serve you. Yeah, it sucks, and yeah, they're close, and yeah, they were great, and they might have meant for that time, but it's okay to be like, you know what? I'm sprinting, yeah. and you're an anchor. Yeah. So I got to No space. more anchors, dude. No That's anchors. what I always say. I wanna, no I anchors. That's what I want to do, because this girl's been asking really good questions this entire time she's been following us, um, and she said that she's going through the same thing right now, and that she's in acting class, and, all, and people are making fun of her. So, yeah, like, what's the biggest advice you can give to Annie Ross? Okay. Tell well, Annie, tell Annie. Annie. All I'm going to say right now is, I'm in Patmos, Greece with my two best friends, staying in a beautiful villa, drinking wine, and having the best time of my life. Everyone else that made fun of me is sitting wherever they were doing their regular job. Keep it up, Annie. That's Don't right. Power stop. through. Don't stop.
If they're I'm, negative in your life, I'm get them the out. I'm living the dream that I've wanted to live, and I worked hard for it, and I endured the I endured the making fun of, I endured everything else that comes with it, the the studying, the having to focus, the staying in on weekends and being like, no, I should actually watch these movies and study these plays instead of going out. Or, you know what, no, actually, because I'm an actor and I need experience, I should go out. Making those decisions, I did all those things, and I worked hard. And now I'm in a place where I'm completely enjoying that, and no one can make fun of me because I'm in Greece with my best friends, and... I'm going to be very candid here. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so, Annie, my, my advice to you is don't give a shit. Do you. Because at the end of the day, no one can decide your experience but you. No one can push you but you. And no one's going to be living your life but you. So you could allow the peanut gallery to make its little noise, or you could stand on stage and accept all the praise. Yep. It's your choice. My mom says, so true, you guys are also inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I'm going to call you Mrs. Grubfather. Mrs. Grubfather, you made an amazing son. And we're really happy to have him with us. And you're really yes. He's our friend. We're so happy to have him here. All right. Any more sa More savages. Um, yeah, you know, I have a question for Alberto. Yeah. Um, here's my question for you. What is your favorite food in the world? Yes, yeah, that's so a grandfather question. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we got what's your favorite food, bro? <laughs> I have two. Can I say I have two? You can have two. You can have two. All right. Roba vieja. The Cuban dish. Roba vieja with white rice and black beans and plantains. Hmm. I love Rope. I love Rope vieja. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. We're going to try that again. Europa? Europa, yeah. Europa, yeah. 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 Yes. Europa, yeah. Europa, yeah. Europa, yeah. Europa, yeah. So, Europa, yeah. Europa, yeah. And the second one is I am a huge sucker for delicious chicken pot pie. You make good chicken pot pie. That's why you like moussaka. That's why I love moussaka because I love shepherd's pie. And I love chicken pot pie. Chicken pot pie, though, is my my Chicken pot pie and probably yeah. If when I go when I die and I go to heaven, those are the first two meals I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have some probably yeah. I'm gonna have some chicken pot pie. No wait wait. Okay, because I didn't get to do this. Let's What's do your it. favorite food in the world? Oh my gosh, You're, everybody's gonna hate me for this one because it's nothing too crazy. Really good, really spicy. Buffalo chicken wing. Oh. I eat those for days and just like. <laughs> I could devour a whole pot full of them. Like I absolutely love, it. and if they're cooked really well, specifically not fried, like they're baked and like fall off the bone meat. Oh, I could oh, eat them yes. for days. And specifically, also the two bone chicken wings, not like the the drumstick ones, like the two bone chicken wings. If I could have an infinite amount of just those, really well done, fall off the bone, buffalo chicken wings. That would be it. I love that. Yeah. And Sal, you answer the question too. <sighs> If I had to pick my favorite food in the world, it's gonna be chicken parmesan. <laughs> you know what? I, I love I love all types of food. Food's great, but I, I love chicken parmesan. It is definitely just like soul food for me. My mom used to make it. My my aunt made it. My grandma's made it. Chicken cutlets, I guess, at the end of the day, are, are what keeps me going. Chicken cutlets. Um, all right, guys. So we're gonna. Uh, that was really great. I mean, you know, look, right now we're traveling. You know, like, we're here in Greece. We got some crazy views going on back there, if I can get the light to shine on it. Whatever. We got some crazy views. You know, we're chilling here. We just crushed a bottle of wine. It was a great time. Um, but <laughs> we wanted to go live because we want to share that with you guys. And we want to open up the dialogue because we got a lot of cool stuff coming your way. So make sure you're following Diego at Diego Rosende. Make sure you're following Alberto. I'm sure most of you do. <laughs> Val Alberto, make sure you follow me, the Grub Father, because um, we're just warming up. Patmos is actually our, 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 our first stop all together. This is our first stop. This is our first stop. And we're all together for a month, one whole month, traveling Europe. Maybe a stop in Africa. Africa, not apricot. Maybe. So, apricots. Fun fact. So, I, I love apricots yeah, too. Yeah, fun fact. Diego's always right. apricots. Uh, uh, Wait, really? I don't listen. I it, and, and, yo, listen, and, and then also, straight up, this is that this, for those of you who are out traveling, and, and it's not possible, is it possible for me to travel, is it possible for me to work a nine to five and still travel, let me tell you something, traveling has nothing to do with getting on a plane and going halfway across the world, traveling has everything to do 
with getting out of your comfort zone and going to see a different place. Oh, that is what that, travel is. There's that famous Marcel Proust quote where it's like traveling has nothing to do with seeing new lands, it's seeing new, it's seeing with new eyes. Exactly. There's exactly. also my favorite one is the reason why I travel is to make my home foreign and make foreign home. Mm, that's so. a great one as well. And, and what I do is I just try to meet as many people as I can. I try to taste as much food as I can, and I try to. Um, um, have a great time while doing it. So we love you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining in. Much love. Be open. Love the world. Alberto. Thank you guys for joining. We'll see you next time. Exactly. And listen to my mom. She's the one who just left this last comment. Do what Sal does. Book the ticket and figure it out later. Exactly the truth. Because what happened? Diego told me, look, Sal, I'm doing a film program in Greece. And you know what I said? All right, my ticket will be booked. I don't know what island it's going to be at, whatever. I, I got a plane ticket to Athens. We figured it out later. Exactly. And here I am in beautiful fucking Pavos with Alberto. So that's all like this. Well, we came to see you. <laughs> so, <laughs> we came for you. <laughs> we love you guys, and uh, stay tuned. We got a lot of cool, 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 cool stuff coming. Peace, peace. peace. Let's go eat a hero. Hey.